So we're going to get started here. I want to welcome everybody here, concerned groomers. My name is Terry DiMarino. The applause are for yourself because you are concerned groomers, concerned about the, the state of our industry. We are here tonight as a concerned bunch of professionals. This is a set of basic standards of care that is being drawn up by leading factions in our industry. It is not a personal agenda um, group of standards. Everyone involved has checked their egos at the door. They've checked their personal agendas at the door. They've checked the chips at their, on their shoulders at the door. And for the first time in history, everyone is working together for the benefit of our industry. We have a few of the members of the Alliance and this is the Professional Pet Groomers and Silas Alliance. This was formed kind of as a knee-jerk reaction from the 969 that Judy Breton and myself dealt with out in California a few years ago. PJAC, who is the Pet Industry Joint Advisory Council, watched us and said we were a force to be reckoned with. We were a quiet force until somebody ruffled our feathers. And we saw that there was injustice going to be done in our industry. And 969 was not going to benefit the pets, their owners, or the grooming industry. And we did succeed in defeating it, but it was by the skin of our teeth. And one of the reasons that we almost lost that bill was because we had no set of standards to show the legislators. We had nothing in our hands and we were scrambling along with the lobbyists and PJAC and the box stores. They all worked together with us and we defeated it. And I'd like to take a moment, we do have a few people from the Alliance with us tonight. Wendy Winans from Petco, please stand up. A groomer. Scott Wasserman representing ISCC, a groomer. Linda Easton and Dr. Jim, IPG. Groomers, we have Kim Raisinen, I gotta get this right, thank you very much, the Professional Cat Groomers Association. <laughs> Jeff Reynolds, National Dog Groomers Association. Which for those of you who don't know, the National Dog Groomers Association has been in existence since 1969, when his, his dad had the foresight. Todd Shelley, Barkley. Joey Villani, New Jersey Groomers. <laughs> Judy Breton, WPA. And these people, we've all worked together and we know that there are a lot of fears, there are a lot of questions out there. Please take your personal agendas and put them aside. Think for the whole of the industry. Everyone has their particular one thing that bothers them, that they worry about, that they wonder about. We're going to put all those fears to rest tonight. We are, the one thing that we say is, we've got this basic standards. Where are they? Why are they not in print? Why can't we see these things? We're crossing the T's and we're dotting the I's legally. But we have a good amount of what we have in it right now. And Judy from WPA is passing out some uh, frequently asked questions. We have, ah, oh, there goes Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. So we've got flyers for everybody. But we're going to address a bunch of these now. This is not a town hall meeting. We've been fielding questions all week long. And I'm going to address these questions. Let's start out. Once again, this is by groomers and stylists, for groomers, stylists, and pets. This is legislation, not legislation at all. These are standards that are written by groomers. This is a, comment, a commitment to basic standards of care for safety and sanitation. First of all, we're going to address what the PPGSA is not. Excuse me, thank you, thank you. What the PPGSA is not. Please move in around here and I'll ask you to keep comments on the low, please. The PPGSA is not a law, a bill, or legislation of any kind. It is not a new membership organization that you're going to be asked to join. Absolutely not. 
It is not a new certification or training program that you'll be forced to complete. It is not an attempt to govern, dictate your style, methods, technique, anything beyond safety and sanitation. That's it. We don't care how you trim schnauzer eyebrows. <laughs> we don't care what your poodle top knots look like. We don't care that you're just a pet groomer or a show groomer. Methods, how you get, we don't care. Are you safe? Are you clean? We are not an attempt to impose a one-size-fits-all approach on individuals grooming and style. As I say, this is not anything to do with your style. The no testing will be done and no inspections will be performed. That is it. And people are saying, why am I here? It's because we need something. We need common sense in print. What is the PBGSA? This is a historic collaboration by grooming and styling professionals representing national and state associations, pet care service providers, grooming schools, major retail partners, and national trade associations. And I emphasize, people you know, said, a historic? As I said, we've been trying to do this for decades, guys. Absolutely. Sally Lydic kicked it about 20 years ago. And Kathy Rose and Greg Chris were on the forefront. Nobody listened. You guys, some of the certifications, the certifications listened. Nobody listened. It was tough. Things have taken a bit of a twist. And people have gotten more serious. I have to guarantee you that if Facebook were as prominent three years ago as it is today, we would have lost in California. Absolutely lost in California. This is a group that was formed over a year ago in response to a growing trend in state grooming legislation. And the impetus was California. And they saw what we did, and they saw that there's strength in numbers. There's strength in the numbers of groomers. This is a voluntary code of practice in an effort to keep pets and our fellow groomers and stylists safe. What's wrong with that? Anybody in this room have a problem with that? I don't think so. This is an effort by groomers and stylists to put common sense to paper and develop a set of basic standards of care for safety and sanitation that all the organizations commit to include and include in their own training and certification programs. If we have a standard basis of care that's being taught the same in every training program across the country, not just in schools, but even in your own personal salon and your own methods. Just safety and sanitation, common sense. We're all, we're all on the same platform. What kind of standards of care are we talking about? Facility standards, pet housing standards. Dogs got to be crated comfortably. Anybody have a problem with that? Excuse me, we're not going to be doing any questions just yet. Thank you. All pets entrusted to the care of pet care professionals must be treated humanely and compassionately. Nobody has a problem with that. Basic equipment and product standards. Every facility shall provide a safe... Oh, and I'm sorry, I do have to introduce. Representing Merrifield Kennels. I just saw her right there. We got Pina. <laughs> Merrifield, Merrifield Academy. I did not see you right there. I do apologize. Anybody else from the Alliance that I did not catch? Okay, we're good. Every facility shall provide a safe and healthy working environment for their employees and the pets left in their care. I don't have a problem with that. Bathing areas, safe. Grooming areas, safe. Dryers, safe. We don't say anything about outlawing dryers. Now, I know there's mixed emotions about box dryers out there. But if a pet is monitored and a dryer is maintained, there, a piece of equipment is only as safe as the operator. And this is what we're emphasizing. Back into facility standards here. General facility practices, emergency protocol, including first aid awareness and fire escape procedures. You ever think about that? What would you do if you had an emergency in your salon? And there's nothing wrong with having a fire escape procedure. Access to cleaning and sanitation products. Compliance with federal, state, and local laws. Nothing wrong with that. Maintenance of pet records and incident reports. That's just good business. Pet care professional standards. 
General professional standards, all pets must be treated and handled safely, humanely, and compassionately. No pets left unsupervised while grooming, bathing, or drying. Products, tools, and equipment must be safe for pets. Work standards, training and qualification, those are still in the works because we still have to step into a few areas to determine what is proper training and qualification, and we may not even go there, very honestly. We may stay away from that. We're more concerned with the care of the pet. Cleanliness and sanitation standards, safe handling and management of pets, and basic ergonomic standards for the groomer health and well-being. You can see you're built into this too. We got selfish motivations behind this. We're groomers. We're going to groom for a long time. The standards of care do not include specific requirements requiring regarding time, table height or size, temperature or other metrics that can vary from breed to breed and situation to situation. If you've got a box dryer, are you drying a Chinese crested hairless that's 15 years old? Or are you drying a full coated Newfoundland? Things are different. We've got so many variables in our industry. We cannot get specific. This is where simple common sense kicks in. There will be not, no discussions of style, method, or technique, whether in general or breed specific. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This is like a hairdresser. This is why you go to one hairdresser, you change because you don't like what they do until you find someone who does. Everybody has their own style. Every circumstances that could, we will not include every circumstance that could possibly occur while grooming or styling a pet. They're meant to reflect the best practices of our industry and a common sense approach to responsible grooming. That's what we got. How will these standards of care be used? This was a question that a lot of people had. The PPGSA member organizations who offer certification or training commit to including PPGSA's basic standards of care for safety and sanitation in their certification training program, keeping things consistent. So if you certify with NDGAA, IPG, or ISCC, you're going to have the same basic standards of care. Now, it is the, the job or the the privilege of each certification organization to enhance on those as they see fit to fit their own unique circumstances. But the, as long as the basics are all the same, we're all on the same page. PPGSA will continue to meet on a regular basis to review the standards and revise them as industry practice and products dictate. This is something that, that we're an ever-changing industry. We know things are different than they were five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. They'll be different five, 10, 15 years from now. And we have to be prepared to change and alter our way of thinking as the industry changes. These standards can be shared with lawmakers either in a proactive stance, meaning that I may go to my um, State Department of Consumer Affairs and say, you don't have anything for basis of dog groomers. And I'll say, here, I offer this to you to help determine whether uh, there's been an issue. And be proactive before somebody else comes along, pushes a button, and tries to write legislation on my industry, which they know nothing about. Or this will be in a response to state call for certification or licensing, and it will demonstrate a responsible grooming practice and industry efforts to self-regulate. So we've got a couple of states now that have laws, that bills on the books. We want to be able to tell them, hey guys, don't write for us. We've already written for us. I don't want somebody that's a pencil pusher telling me how to groom a dog. And I think we can all agree. Yep. Members of the PPGSA are International Society of Canine Cosmetology, National Dog Groomers Association of America, International Professional Groomers, National Cat Groomers Institute of America, Professional Cat Groomers Association of America, California Professional Groomers, American Kennel Club, Barkley Productions, PJAC, which is the Pet Industry Joint and Advisory Council. For those who don't know that, they are our watchdogs. They are our lobbyists in Washington, D.C. 
Merrifield School of Pet Grooming, WPA, the World Pet Association, Canadian Professional Pet Stylist, America's Pet Registry, Petco, and PetSmart. Box stores and big, uh, big money, the, the PJAC people, our deep pockets, these guys are the ones that are our watchdogs. Petco, PetSmart, been a huge help to us. They have a lot of groomers. And ladies and gentlemen, these people are our sister and brother groomers out there. They're in the trenches with us. It's just that they got a bigger target on their butt. That's all it is. Sorry, but they have, everybody has been a huge help in this effort. Professional Pet Groomers and Stylists Alliance. Compliance with these basic standards of care is voluntary. These standards of care may be used as an educational tool and as a standard by all those interested in promotional of, promotion of sound care and grooming practices. These standards of care have been developed as a directive of proper care and grooming protocol. Not methods, just protocol. We've been put into, they've been put together with both pet safety and the groomer safety in mind. These are paramount in our industry. God knows that, that Facebook, somebody gets a bad haircut, you're all over Facebook. God forbid you injure a dog, you can lose your business now. And it's just simple, stupid things. We want to at least say, don't do that, it's stupid. And everyone has to be aware of that. The standards of care must be considered a living document. This means it's subject to changes and amendments as new information becomes available. Now, this is for questions. If you have more information uh, or you offer suggestions or feedback, I'm in the ring all weekend. I'm in classes all weekend. So I'm pretty easy to find. There's my personal email address, or Mike Bober is our man with PJAC. You can forward it to him. We also have a pet alert that's out there now for New Jersey groomers, and that is the link to that. And I'm gonna be, in a couple of minutes, right after I do some, some questions, answer a few questions I have here, I'm gonna have Joey Villani come up. Now, a few days ago, I did address on Facebook. People could uh, send me questions. And in an effort to keep everything on time, because we do have stuff after this, I have condensed these questions and gonna answer a few of them. A few of the areas that we missed, and we're appreciative, and this is one of the reasons we're having this meeting right now, is to answer some questions. One group that we missed, house call groomers. House call groomers, this is, this is a faction that's worth, wow, okay, fine, this is a growing faction of our industry. House call groomers and also cage free or cage optional. These will be addressed. Now, of course, there are a few things that would have to, there, there's a lot of responsibility falls into the hands of a person with a cage optional salon. And the one groomer that did offer suggestions, this is another thing, if you're gonna have a question or have an objection, please come to us with a solution. And the person with the cage optional salon had a solution where she has her customers sign releases. And I believe Joey might be able to work on a little bit of something with a signed release or a, ch a customer checklist. Where yes, I don't want my dog, my dog does not have to be in a cage. So this cuts down on the liability of the groomer. Cage free, cage optional, house call groomers, these things will be addressed. Because with a house call groomer, you don't know if you're walking into a pigsty or paradise. The home groomer, the home call, house call groomer can still be responsible for the maintenance and cleanliness of their own equipment and the humane handling of pets. Simple as that. Cage or box dryer debate. This is a big debate out there because there have been accidents by a few careless groomers that make us all look bad. We are not dictating or asking for any specific temperature controls or anything like that. Keep these dryers maintained and monitor those pets. That's a big one. If you don't supervise the pet, if you don't monitor the pet, you're gonna have an accident. Uh, another one that came up is school trained, apprenticeship, or self-taught. I'm self-taught. I'm self-taught. A lot of people in here are self-taught. This is the way it used to be. It still is. There's nothing wrong with apprenticeship, and we've written that in. It's okay. Uh, some people will ask about what about grandfathering. There's nothing to grandfather. 
because there's no legislation. So relax. We're not passing legislation. Absolutely not. If anything, this will be a tool to help us defer legislation and definitely to defer damaging legislation. Someone asked about minimum age requirements. We have no minimum age requirements, but I'm sure that that was in response to some of the bills that are out there do have minimum age requirements. And the states have to address this on their own with our guidance. So this is one thing that we are not putting it in, but that is a state thing. Someone had requested, are we going to address gross negligence? We know from being ground zero in California, you do not want to go there. Everyone's idea of gross negligence is a little different. So you do not want to address gross negligence. It's not a problem. Uh, another question was, will the PPGSA write legislation, or is it the plan to fight potential le legislation? As I mentioned in the PowerPoint, this can be used as a proactive tool to teach, to learn, to help our certification or help ourselves in the salon. Or in the event that legislation does come around, it can be a tool to say, hey, we already have this in place. Instead of someone trying to write our job description for us. And how will the standards be enforced? Once again, this is voluntary. You don't have to abide by these standards. We're not asking anyone to abide by anything. We're just writing common sense. If you don't want to abide by common sense, that's your own prerogative. But there's nothing to be enforced. There's a lot of fear out there. And the meeting tonight, we're, we're, we thank you, Todd. Thank you, Barkley, for giving us this venue. And we're going to be revealing the finished product, as we say, it, at a Hershey meeting. And the only thing, reason we don't have a fin, everybody get the flyers that Judy had? Did we not have enough? Share them, please. Okay, we got a few. Share them. Share them. This is Q&A. It's basically just going over just what I've gone over tonight. This is not an, a big issue. It's just, you know, reinforcing what we have here. But there is nothing that is going to be enforceable. Now, someone might say, well, then why are you even bothering? We're bothering because we don't want other people to regulate our industry without us having a say. What's wrong with having basic standards of care across the industry? If you are conducting a safe and clean salon, chances are really good you're already there. So you have nothing to worry about. But if you're a person who leaves dogs unsupervised on a table, or put a dog in a dryer, a cage dryer, and go out to lunch, shame on you. Shame on you. Now, there's a couple of things that I, I know I've answered the questions that came through on the internet to us. We are, do have a time constraint. In typical legislative fashion, uh, we got news today that one of the bills in New Jersey has moved forward. And this is something that we learned. Anybody watch the show House of Cards? House of Cards. That stuff really happens. It really is amazing. All this stuff behind your back, and all of a sudden, we're not going to hear this bill until the end of the month. Oh, wait a minute. We have a space on Monday. And there is one of the bills in New Jersey is going to be heard on Monday at 1030 in the morning. And what we have done, there is PJAC once again. PJAC is our industry watchdogs. They're our lobbyists. They got this on the radar because they have lobbyists on retainer in all the states that are alerted to anything pet related. This came up on the radar. They immediately blasted out. What we have down there, pjock.org slash njgroomers. This is a pet alert and what this is going to be. We will have a couple of laptops set up at the judges table tomorrow and we'll be dialed into this. Everybody can come and fill out this form, put your personal information. There is a list of, uh, of four talking points that may express your personal views or you can write your own personal view. You click on it, it goes to the six representatives of directly to the email boxes of the six representatives 
that are on this committee. They just want this to get through the committee now. Now, I did ask, do they have to be constituents of New Jersey? And they said they like it, but if they get enough numbers in, they stop looking at locations and they start looking at the numbers. So I don't care if you're from Washington State, California, Colorado, New Jersey, or Maine. Come fill this thing out. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hand this over to Joey Villani, and he's going to talk a little more about New Jersey. Well, th thank you, everyone. It's great to see such a turnout in this room. Um, back in probably early 2014, I believe it was, um, Bijou's bill came up in New Jersey. It was a knee-jerk reaction to um, someone's dog that, that had passed away in a grooming salon. Um, Chuck Simons, Michael Glass, and myself went to Trenton to actually speak on the bill in behalf of New Jersey pet groomers. What we found out at that point in time is they don't even know how the, the pet passed away, but unfortunately it did happen in the care of a groomer because no autopsy or anything was done. The pet was, um, was cremated and um, there was no findings there. What they wanted to do though immediately in the bill is they wanted to um, ban certain types of equipment, certain methods, you know, a major knee jerk reaction um, thinking that that would solve the problem. Now, the intent behind the bill was genuine. Just how they were doing it would really, would have hurt us as professional groomers, not only the professional groomers, but also the manufacturers of some equipment. And um, it would have made our lives um, a lot harder, and it wouldn't have really solved the problem. After the three of us got up and we spoke, the speaker, um, adjourned it and said that the assembly woman who brought the bill to the table needs to sit down and speak with the industry and see if we can come to some sort of you know meeting grounds and terms of maybe making this work for everyone. Um, which worked out really well because what we did find out was is it was a knee-jerk reaction and they were willing to actually sit down and discuss this with the professionals. We had a meeting that we met in early February. Unfortunately, it was one of those days where we had a, two feet of snow, and it was real hard for people to get around, but we did have some representation at the meeting. What happened at that meeting was they actually sat down and they listened to what we had to say. So they pulled off the table the banning of the products, the equipment, and everything that we, that we were working to stop. They agreed to it at this point in time to stop it and basically came up with an owner's consent form. If the owners consent to certain things like kennel drying or use of pesticides, we'll be able to move forward. They made it very clear because there was a, an attorney in the meeting that was from the other side that was um, screaming that, um, you know, this isn't working, that you're working too much with the industry and you're not listening to the people. And... Um, Assemblywoman Huddle basically said, if the industry doesn't approve of this, it's not going to work for anyone. So we were able to actually get them to listen to us. And we're still working on it. This isn't anything that's complete by all means. Um, we're supposed to meet again in early September. On Friday, Bill 2625 popped out of nowhere. It has nothing to do with Bijou's bill. I immediately got in touch with the assembly people that I have been working with all along and said, you know, what is going on? 2625 is basically governed by the Department of Health, and they want the Department of Health now to be able to govern groomers. But the problem with it is, it's very vague. Nobody knows what's in this bill. It was presented by Stephen Sweeney, who is the Senate president in the state of New Jersey. He's the most powerful man underneath the governor. So why he is pushing this when he has such a big agenda, I don't know. So it's concerning. So that's why it's very important that you go here and you actually voice you know, your opinion. Unfortunately, this is happening Monday while I am still here, and um, Chuck and, and a lot of people are still here. We will have some representation, but not as much as we want. So it's important. Sweeney will probably be the next governor of New Jersey. Uh, yes, so 
So it's important that you are heard right now because once one state passes one of these bills, what's going to happen? It's going to snowball. We don't want we we want to at least see what it, what it is. And right now it's vague. So, you know what? Let's let's um let's get your voice be heard. And um, again, we have some friends in New Jersey that are willing to work with us. Let's hope we continue to work with them and do what's right. Thank you, Joey. I really have to reiterate what Joey said. Your voice is heard. Your voice is important. California 969 proved that. And we became known as the grassroots groomers. And when they saw us trucking up and down the halls of Sacramento, they said, these people are, are a force to be reckoned with. They hear you. It is very important that each of you find out who your local assembly people are, who your local senators are. Let them know you run businesses, you pay taxes. It is your right as a taxpayer, as a resident, to know what's going on and to voice your opinion to these, these people that run our government. They could be running your businesses. The things that Joey worries about in these bills is the unwritten agendas, the things that are hidden, the stuff we don't know about. Someone has a personal agenda built in to the back. I think they call it pork barrel. And they, they, they're going to, and this bill that popped up is also, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, coupled with animal importers to the state and trainers, correct? Okay, so groomers are coupled in with animal importers to the state and trainers. So you're being lumped in together, and that sounds like it's not really in our best interest. So I'm going to invite you. We're going to have a couple of laptops set up at the judge's table tomorrow. And I'm going to ask you to please come by. We'll have this site up. You put in your personal information. You can put in a personal comment. It can be something as simple as, please don't pass this bill, or please postpone this. What we found was that legislators don't want to hear, kill this bill, kill this bill. They want to hear, this bill is the result of a complaint from a citizen. What can we do to make this work? Why was this brought to the forefront? And it's our jobs in the profession because we're on the short end of the stick when a dog gets hurt. It's our job as, uh, as professionals to tell them what we do. And this is exactly what the PPGSA, the alliance, is going to do, is we're going to tell people this is what we do safely for the pets involved. Now, I know everybody does have questions, but we do have, we appreciate Todd, we got the forum. We have accomplished our task here. I'm going to hang out for a little while, but we do have to disperse the crowd. And because we've got something going on in less than 10 minutes over in one of the other rooms. I'm here all weekend. We've got Alliance members that'll be here all weekend, and we are absolutely more than happy to answer any questions. I thank everyone here in the room for coming and listening. Come to the judge's table and fill this out tomorrow. Thank you very much.